what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel we have this nice and beautiful question on the board that we're going to be solving and the question says find the values of x for which the x root of 36 plus the x root of 24 is equal to the x root of 16. Well, our first step will be for us to divide through by the x root of 36. So here we have the x root of 36. I'll divide by the x root of 36 plus we have the x root of 24. I'll divide the x root, divide by the x root of 36. Remember, we are dividing through by the x root of 36. So this is x root of 16. I'll divide by the x root of 36. Now notice that the x root of 36 can cancel out from here, leaving behind 1. So I have 1 here, plus what we have here, we have the x root of 24. 24 is the same as 12 times 2 all over the denominator. We have the x root of 36. 36 is same as 12 times 3. Very good. And this is equal to the x root of 16. 16 is same as 4 times 4 all over the denominator, the x root of 36. 36 is same as 4 times 9. Very good. Now this is what we're going to get. 12 will cancel out 12 from here. 4 will cancel out 4 from here. So that we have 1 plus the x root of what we have here is 2 all over the denominator x root of 3 equal to now on the right hand side we have the x root of 4 all over the x root of 9 very good now we should know that when i have the nth root of a all over the nth root of b this is the same as the nth roots of a all over b. So we're going to be applying this property to what we have here. So this expression now becomes 1 plus, now we have the x roots of 2 over 3. So 2 over 3 following this property is equal to the x roots of 4 over 9 so 4 over 9 very good now our next step will be for us to apply another property and that's going to be the property of indices which says when i have the end roots of let's say m this is the same as m to the 1 all over n so we're going to be applying this to what we have here and here. So we have 1 plus this expression can be written as 2 over 3 raised to the 1 all over x, just like this. And this is equal to, we do the same thing here. This is 4 over 9 raised to the 1 all over x. Very good. Now notice that 4 is a perfect square, so as 9. So we have 1 plus 2 over 3 raised to the 1 all over x. This is equal to 4 is a perfect square, which means it can be written as 2 squared all over 9 is a perfect square, which means it can be written as 3 squared. Very good. And this is raised to the 1 all over x. 
Now, our next step will be for us to apply the property of indices, which says when I have A to the N all over B to the N, this is the same as A over B all raised to the N. So we're going to be applying this property to what we have here. So this is 1 plus 2 over 3 raised to the 1 all over x. This is equal to, now this expression like this can be written as 2 over 3 raised to the power of 2. And recall that we have a power of 1 over x. So I'm going to be raising this to a power of 1 all over x. Now let's apply the property of indices which says when I have a to the n and this is raised to the m, this is the same as a to the m to the n. That means we can switch the position of m and n. So let's switch the position of this 2 and this 1 all over x so that what I have here can look like this. So we have 1 plus, this is 2 over 3, raised to the 1 all over x. This is equal to, this is 2 over 3. Now I'm going to be taking this inside. So this will be to the 1 all over x. And then I'm going to be taking this 2 outside. So to the power of 2. Very good. Very good. Now notice that I have this expression here as well. So we can just introduce substitution by saying let 2 over 3 raised to the 1 all over x be equal to m. That means wherever I see this expression, I'm going to be putting m there. Very good. So this becomes 1 plus this is m equal to, and this is going to be m squared. So this is m squared. So we have a quadratic expression. Now our next step will be for us to move what we have on the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So we have m squared here on the right. When m moves to the right, it becomes minus m. And when 1 moves to the right, it becomes minus 1. Very good. And this is equal to 0 on the left-hand side. Or we can flip the positions by writing what we have here first, which is m squared minus m minus 1 equal to what we have here, which is 0. Now, we're going to be solving this using the quadratic formula. So if we're going to use the quadratic formula, what will our a be? a is the coefficient of m squared, and that is 1. b is the coefficient of m, and that's negative 1. And c is the constant term, which is also negative 1. Since I'm looking for m, m is equal to, using the quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now let's substitute into this quadratic formula. So we have m to be equal to minus b, b is negative 1, so I'm going to be putting negative 1 there, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's negative 1 squared, so negative 1 squared minus 4 times a. What is a? a is 1 times c. And what is c? c is negative 1, so times negative 1. Very good. All over 2a, which is 2 times 1, since a is 1. So now this simplifies into m equal to negative times negative 1 gives positive 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared is 1. Now this is negative 4 
times 1 times negative 1 gives you plus 4. Very good. All over, 2 times 1 is 2. Now we have m to be 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 is actually 5 all over 2. So we've got two values of m. We have m to be equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2, if you're going with a positive, or m, let me write all here, m is equal to 1. Now this time, go with the negative, minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Very good. Now we have this as a golden ratio. I, I believe we all know that. Now recall, recall that from our substitution, we said let 2 over 3 raised to the 1 all over x be equal to m. So we're going to be substituting the value of m here so that we can get the value of x. Let's do that on the next slide. Well, I'll try and make x the subject. And since x is an exponent, that means we're going to be taking the log of both sides. So I'll take the log of 2 over 3 raised to the 1 all over x equal to, I'll take the log of the right-hand side as well, which is log m. Now, I'm going to be applying the law of logarithm to what we have on the left-hand side. The law of logarithm which says when I have the log of a to the n, this is the same as n log a. Very good. So that means this expression can be written as 1 all over x log 2 all over 3. And this is equal to log m. And like I said, we want to make x a subject. This is a coefficient, so we're going to be dividing both sides by the log of 2 over 3. So I'll divide the left-hand side by the log of 2 over 3. I'll also divide the right-hand side by the log of 2 over 3. Now notice that log 2 over 3 can cancel off from the left, leaving behind 1 all over x. To be equal to now on the right hand side we have the log of m all over the log of 2 all over 3. Now recall that what I have on the left is an inverse of x. So in order to get the value of x I'll take the inverse of both sides. So the inverse of 1 all over x is x. This is equal to the inverse of log m all over log 2 over 3 is log 2 over 3 all over log m. Well, this is actually flipping the position. The numerator becomes the denominator, while the denominator becomes the numerator. And that is how to take the inverse of both sides of a fraction. And now, Let's substitute what we've got for m. Remember that we've got two values of m. We've got m to be 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. Or we've got m to be 1 minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Well, this is actually negative, so we're not going to be choosing this since we're dealing with log. So I'll just focus on this. Now let's put this value of m here. So we have x to be equal to the log of 2 over 3 all over the log of m. And what is the value of m? We've got that to be 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. Very good. All right, now simplifying further, we apply the law of logarithm, which says when I have the log of m all over n, this is the same as the log of m minus the log of n. So let's apply this property of logarithm 
to what we have on the numerator and on the denominator. So x now becomes log 2 over 3 is same as log 2 minus log 3 according to this property. All over. Now the denominator log 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 is same as log 1 plus the square root of 5 which is the numerator here minus log the denominator which is 2. Very good. Now to get our final answer log 2 log 2 is same as 0 0.3010 minus log 3 log 3 is same as 0 0.4771 all over log 1 plus the square root of 5 is 0 0.510 and then minus log 2 is 0 0.3010 the numerator on evaluating gives negative 0 0.17 all over the denominator on evaluating gives 0 0.21 now negative 0 0.17 divided by 0 0.21 we're going to have negative 0 0.843 and there we have it well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.